I'm going to run through the basic stitches that you need to use on your sewing machine. When you get out your sewing machine or you'll know from using your sewing machine that there is loads, there's so many different types. You can see some of them in the background there on mine. But really there's only two or three um, stitches that you really need to get yourself started. First of all, I'm going to show you how to use your straight basic running stitch. So that is usually the first stitch that you'll come across. If you've got a digital machine, it will set it up to the basic stitch. If you're using a non-digital, then, then it will be put into that uh, basic stitch to begin with as well. The best way to test it is the scrap of fabric, but it's also worthwhile doing it on two pieces because that's usually what you're sewing with. So when you're checking your tension, you want to make sure that you've got the right stitch tension for the amount of fabric that you're using. So first things first, uh, put the needle down. I've got 2.4 on the length of the stitch. My tension is 2.5 roughly, and I'm just gonna slow that down a little bit there. And bring the needle back up before we take it out, lift the presser foot and out it comes. That one there is your basic sewing stitch. That's the one that you'll be using most often and sewing things together with. Next, I'm going to show you how we use the back stitch button here. When you do any kind of seam, you want to be able to use the back foot stitching at the beginning and the end of each seam. And that means that it just secures each seam so it won't come unraveled. So again, you put the needle in. What we tend to do is we tend to start a few stitches press the back foot a little bit so that's three or four stitches worth there so then we go through we sew our seam straight through the middle and you can do it whilst it's still going there like that that's what i tend to do lift the press of foot up we shall trim it off and there you can see those deeper darker sections there is where you've done the back stitch so that means that nothing it's going to come on frayed once you've done those steams and that's secured then. So to do the zigzag stitch, we find the specific number on your machine. So in this case, it's seven. So I'm just going to pop that up to seven. You may have a dial switch so you can do it accordingly as well, but there'll always be um, a key on either on your machine or inside the machine somewhere that shows you what each uh, different number does. In most cases with zigzag stitches, people do it at a 3.5 width and a 1.5 to 2 millimetre in length. So just put the needle in and we're going to start and do a few stitches there. And of course you can increase your length of stitch so you might want to give it a little bit more depth or you might want to also make this a little bit wider but I also take this down so it's very close together so it's a little bit thicker and wider the stitches look like so there you can see where I started off with the 3.5 and 1.5 and then we've widened it out by increasing the length of the stitch and then we've shortened it down again but we've widened in the width there. So zigzag stitching is great for when you're doing edging of seams so it can stop fraying and um, it's also great for applique techniques and it's really good if you're using jersey or stretch fabrics because you can do all your seams in a zigzag and then the fabric when it's stretching out the thread and the stitch seams stretch with it. So I'm going to pop that just down there, put the presser foot down, and that is number four on my machine here. It's usually recommended that the width is 3.5 and the length is 2.5, so I'm just going to pop that in. Now this is a slower stitch, so you'll see it going a lot slower, so we'll do a little bit just to show you here. You start the button, but to gently feed your fabric through, you don't have to do a lot. I'm really holding this very gently with my fingertips. see that one that's looking a, li a lot thicker there and that really gives some strong stitching in there for those heavier garments and those things that need a bit more protection. The next stitch I'm going to show you is the over edge stitch. Now this is really good for hemming garments or cleaning up garments and giving them a professional finish. It's a little bit like an overlocker but if you've not got the overlocker or surgeon machine then this is a really good 
way to finish things off. I've had to change the foot over, so it depends on your machine, but for most of them, you'll need to swap the foot over and all of those instructions will be in your sewing machine manual. So you make sure that the threads are again, through the middle of the presser foot and push to the back there. And what we're going to do is for my machine, it's number 11, so I'm just gonna pop that back up there. Popping that in there, it's going to touch, just line up with this little black end of the foot here. Put that machine down, put the bottom down, and then off What we've got there is a really nicely finished edge there. So I guess it's a little bit slower than an overlocker, but it does do a really good effect there for you. This stitch I'm going to show you is the blind hemming stitch. And this is really handy if you're not a big fan of hand sewing your, your hems. We have again put a special little foot onto that. So again, follow your sewing machine manual and that will show you which foot to put on. But this stitch is great. And on my machine, it's number 13. So it's again, nice and easy to set up. Everything's sorted for you on there. The only thing that you have to do is fold your fabric so it looks a little bit like that. Now, when you've finished, it'll open up like that and that is the correct side of your fabric. So this the bit that you're stitching on is the wrong side. Line the fold up with the middle of the foot. You'll be shown that in your manual, but it's really simple. Again, pop your knee, press your foot down, needle in, and away you go. Just gently guide it through, keeping that really close to the little guide there. to show you so that's what it looks like on the wrong side and this is what it looks like on the right side so you can see really nicely there that you've just got the tiniest little stitch so it's perfect for hemming things 